Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are going to answer the question why is the Islamic world lagging behind and the West is advancing? Most of the Islamic countries are dominated by the trend of tradition and this trend does not encourage creativity and innovation. As for example, if the Mu'tazila sect in the 9th and the 10th century ID, they were the one who won, of course things will be better than we are today. The rise of the Mu'tazila star in the Islamic history was a milestone. The personality of the Abbasi Khalifa al mamun in 807-838 AD was a character different from his predecessor of the Abbasi Khalifat. He made the house of wisdom a center for the translation of Greek books and thanks to him the people knew Greece, Aristotle, Plato and others and mathematics and other science. The Mu'tazila sect joined around the Khalifa al mamun and he became convinced of their thought and become one of them. This was the first movement for change and renewal in the Islamic thought. The reform and the renewal movement that followed in the 18th and 19th century was a natural reaction after the Islamic community was exposed to colonization. And the colonial period was a shock in the Islamic war that makes them recognize the the western country progressed a lot and they cannot do anything about it. Islamic world at that time did not know where to start and where to end because they had an identity crisis. It's like you don't know who you are and why are you here. And this impact or shock which the Islamic civilization was exposed to in the face of Western colonialism created a new movement in the Islamic world. This Islamic reform movement called for the reform of the religious discourse, the rejection of sectarian discord and the sectarian fanaticism and the departure of tradition mixed with the myth and ideas that are alien to Islam. And it was led by many well-known scholars called religious reformer. Some of them appear in the 18th century, but the majority of them from the 19th century. Among the most prominent of these reformer or religious renewer, Jamal ad-Din al-Afghani is the most famous one, and his student Muhammad Abdu Rashid Rida, Rafa'a al-Tahtawi, Abdul Rahman al-Kawakibi, Hassan al-Banna, Jamal al-Banna, Muhammad al-Ghazali and other. They are all from the framework of the reform movement that began in 1830 and ended in 1939. This is the period on which there is consensus among the majority in Islamic nations. At the same time, this movement was calling for a new understanding of Islam by re-understanding and interpreting the Quran and Sunnah using traditional jurisprudential tools such as ishtihad or diligence, analogy, consensus, etc. in order to reformulate a reform project in light of rational scientific standards. But some of these reformers see as following the example of the early Muslims of the companion and the successor who work hard in the development of their era and were more flexible and open. This movement wanted to restore the honor of the religion by promoting the idea that religion is not a problem to the modernization of the Islamic world and they pointed out that in order to solve this problem and to bring back Islamic world from this crisis is to use the mind and logic instead of copying tradition directly. It's like they are all based their ideas on what the Mu'tazila was founded on in the 9th century ID. As for example, Jamal Din al-Afghani say that the Islamic sect is the problem of us lagging behind and in order to get out of this crisis we need to go back to the Islam of the camp to the time of the Omar, Ali and Abi Bakr. So we can take a clear version of the Islam from the people who live with Muhammad in order to make a better version of Islam, clear and pure one, because the sect he say are the reason for our split and we have to get rid of these sects and follow the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet and his companion. And his student Muhammad Abdu he promoted the idea of reform the same way as Martin Luther King do in Christianity, that we just 
just need to remove some practice and things that are not from Islam or so-called Bida thing are added to the Islam and to use the logic and the modern science to interpret the Quran and Sunnah. This reform movement split into two types and two different views in their opinion on why the Islamic world is lagging behind and the Western country is advancing. Some say what the European countries and the West civilizations say about us is true, but religion is not the main problem here. These are just things that have been added to the religion after all of these centuries and we need just to remove them. As for example, some say the polygamy is something bad, but it does not exist in Islam and it is something that have been added to it. Rashid Rida and others reply to this argument and say the polygamy is something good because it is the original and it is the human nature and the nature of man to have many women and because Islam is the truly religion and give you a clear picture not the same as in the West. The man can marry one woman but have too many girlfriends. After the Second World War ended, the majority of Muslim countries gained independence. Individual leaders of each country try to make balance in the power between religion and politics in order to keep power and keep ruling as a dictator forever. None of these things make any difference and things stay the same until the 70s. When the Islamic Revolution started in Iran, most Sunni countries in Arab world start adopting Arabization, especially in North Africa, where the majority of people either speak the native language Amazigh or Tifinagh or speak the language of the colonizer. As for example, in Morocco in the 70s, there were so few people who spoke Arabic, and the majority of people either spoke Tamazigh or French language, and the French was the main language used in the school and in the public sectors. When the King Hassan II wanted to counter the threat of the Iranian revolution and their ideology, he started pushing the Wahhabi sect ideology to the mind of the Moroccans by using TV and allowing books to come in and to be studied in the Quranic schools and the mosques. And he was the main responsible of building so many Quranic schools to teach people Quran and Sunnah. At that time, Islamic movement had the opportunity to spread and take power, so they started to engage in the politics. All of this and the discovery of the oil in the Middle East lead to this crisis we live today. Because Al-Qaeda or ISIS or other Islamic groups never was going to have a chance if the dictator's leader did not give a chance to the Salafi movement to spread between people. And all these events remind us that Islam cannot be reformed by any means. Even if you try hard enough, because there is no way you can say this is good or this is bad. Islam as a whole does not have a center which can be held as the main responsible body that can carry these changes. It's not like Christianity which the church and the pope have the ultimate power to change things. In the light of all of this, Muslims should understand that Islam is the main issue and the problem and stop looking around for excuses in order to protect their fragile belief. Today we don't talk about reforming Islam, rather we talk about the modernist Islam and the liberal Islam. And the reform or the renewal of Islam stay somewhere in the past forgotten and rotten. Thank you very much guys for watching and see you again for another video.